Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. confirms that doctors found a dead worm in his brain more than a decade ago. The New York Times says Kennedy claimed in a 2012 legal deposition that the worm, quote, ate a portion of his brain, causing cognitive issues. Kennedy's spokesperson said he now is in good health, and a candidate wrote on X that he'd offer to eat five more brain worms and still beat President Trump and President Biden in a debate. With us now, CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder, editor-at-large at Public Health KFF. Um, a lot of questions we have, so let's jump yes, right into yeah. it. Yes. So he claims a worm ate a portion of his brain. Um, I need to ask, how is that possible first? <laughs> and then what are the results from that. So there are parasitic infections you can get in your brain. Usually this happens in uh, countries where you have poor sanitation, unclean uh -huh. water. Mm -hmm. These parasites do not eat your brain per se, uh, but it, the most likely one that he would have uh, is a pork tapeworm uh, okay. related uh, cyst. And those generally will stay in place. They might grow, cause inflammation or swelling, and that's how you get symptoms, but they're not eating your brain. Okay. But they can get in your brain, that's true? You can get a, a parasit you parasite can, in you your can. brain. And the way this typically would happen is you have the parasite eggs in feces, mm -hmm. and then you're having food or water, your hands are contaminated mm. with that, and that's how you end up with that infection. He says he's, he's fully recovered. Do you recover if something has been uh, in your brain? Usually with these things, they get walled off by your immune system and they get, quote, calcified, so cal calcium um, mm -hmm. around it. And so for most people, they probably don't even know they have this. Mm -hmm. It's only when they develop symptoms like seizures or headaches, or maybe incidentally it's picked up on a scan that you're having for some other reason. And you said that this, this was more, you know, I, I guess a problem that you would see in a third world type country, but how common is something like this? Well, we don't know for sure because we don't go scanning everybody these heads, okay. especially in that kind of setting, but it is one of the most common causes of seizure around the world where you don't have good water and sanitation. And so symptoms would be seizures, what else? Seizures, headaches, nausea, vomiting, those are going to be the most common symptoms if you're going to have symptoms. He also reveals something about mercury poisoning. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that, the long and short term effects of that? Well, that can cause some cognitive issues. And how do you get mercury poisoning? Well, it? he's saying he got it through uh, eating too much tuna, tuna. and other mm -hmm. big predatory fish that are more likely to have high levels of mercury. It's certainly possible if he was eating that much canned tuna and so on. Mm -hmm. um, it's also unclear what his levels actually were. Uh, is that what's causing his memory issues now? You know, it's really hard to say. I haven't seen his medical records. There are any number of things that could be causing that. But between the parasite and the mercury, it's more likely the mercury. Is, is the brain like other parts of your body where it can recover and heal itself? Uh, up to a point, yes. Um, so could you have some level of uh, mercury toxicity and then mm -hmm. recover from that? Sure. It just really depends on how long, how high how the exposure. Yeah. Mm. All right. Dr. Wow. Celine Gounder, we had so many questions. Thank you for being here to answer them.